Welcome to Your Cyber Path, the podcast that helps you get your dream cybersecurity job by sharing the secrets of experienced hiring managers and top cybersecurity professionals with you. Now, on to the show. So today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about uh, the N in the CIANA, and that's non repudiation, which I don't know if, if the folks uh, listening to this episode have ever heard that term, non-repudiation. It's really kind of like a techno weenie sort of a, of a term. <laughs> it's a very nerdy term. Uh, but, um, but, you know, let's talk about like, well, okay, if it's such a weird term, why, why are we talking about it? Like, what is this, Jason? Yeah, so when I hear the word non-repudiation, it just reminds me of one of those like fine dollar words that means something mm-hmm. really simple, but people think of like, just using a complicated word, like quintessential, right? Like I hear that word and look, what does that mean? And then you go, oh, it just means that's the perfect example of something, right? Yeah, yeah, like, it's absolutely it's been so <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so, so it's, it, when you think about words like that, sometimes it's just a really complicated word to something simple. And when I think of non-repudiation, it basically means can't say didn't do the thing that you did. Um, so let's say, you know, I went over to Kim's house tonight and I was really bad at him. So I decided to, uh, you know, put a flaming bag of dog poo on his door and ring the doorbell and run away. Um, he would never know it was me, right? But if I signed my name to that bag before I lit it on fire, then he would know Jason did it. I could say, <laughs> or was, yeah, I might think it, right? <laughs> if my ring doorbell caught you. <laughs> yes, right. That's a detective control, though, in that case, that's, right? That's, um, that's right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But that's, that's what we're talking about, right? When you talk about non repudiation, it's when you take an action on a computer system, you can't say you didn't do it. And so this all goes into your auditing process and capturing who does what when in the system, journaling those things so we can go back and investigate them later if there's an issue. Yeah. The most important way that we do non-repudiation is really with digital signatures uh, in most computer networks. And so we're going to dive into digital signatures and non-repudiation as, as we talk about this. Yeah. What do you think about one thing about non-repudiation? <laughs> well, you know, some common everyday examples I think would be very, very helpful um, other than the flaming bag of poo. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can tell. So uh, let's see if we can, you know, rein it in here a little bit. So when you get a delivery uh, and it's a high value item, let's say your next iPhone or, you know, you got yourself a nice laptop or something like that. Well, when FedEx or UPS brings it to your door, they're not going to just leave it at the stoop and walk away. They want a signature. And the reason they want that signature is because they want proof of delivery. They don't want anybody coming back to them and saying, you didn't deliver my thing, pay me for my lost, you know, uh, electronic item. So that's a, actually a form of non-repudiation. It's an analog form, but we've been doing that for years and years and years uh, is, you know, the, the delivery company just wants to be able to say, uh, you can't deny that we gave you this package over your door threshold. So that's a real life example where somebody else wants you to sign something because you know, they don't want you to get out of it. But can, Jason, can you think of a time when I would want non-repudiation for my benefit? Yeah. So, you know, one of the reasons I like to use non-repudiation is whenever I'm downloading a new application, right? So if I'm downloading a new app in the iPhone store or in the app store or Google Play store, or even from Microsoft store for Windows computers, uh, when you download that code, the first thing your system does is it checks that application package and verifies that it was digitally signed. And the reason they do that is because if anybody added any more ones and zeros, like some malware into that code, it's going to drastically change the hash value, which is made up by that digital signature. And so it'd be very quick and easy to see, hey, somebody messed with this, and this isn't the Angry Birds app you thought it was. This is actually Angry Birds that's going to hack your iPhone. And so you don't want to install that version, right? Right. A- Angry <laughs> Birds with, with bonus Trojan. <laughs> yeah, with bonus Trojan. Exactly, right? Uh, and so that's what we use code signing for. And code signing is literally just a hash of the software code itself when it's been compiled. And then they take that hash and they crypt that hash with a private key, which then becomes this digital signature that gets appended to that package. It right. doesn't give us any confidentiality, but it does give us that integrity. Um, and then we get this non repudiation because the developer can't say, I didn't do that code. I didn't put that Trojan in there. Well, it was signed with your key, buddy. So I guess you did, right? And yeah. Help figure that out. Yeah. So as, so as the person who downloads the app, I want the protection of knowing that what I what I downloaded is exactly what I was trying to download, and I didn't get anything more than than what I expected. That's a great example, and I think that you've done a wonderful job of kind of like moving us into the digital realm, right, from the physical analog realm 